My name is Jeanette, I'm 45 years of age, and this is my story. story is I wanted to hang around with the ink crowd. I smoked weed from I was 14 and drank. I was an apprentice hairdresser so I was the only one who got served in off licenses because I wore makeup and good clothes because I worked for Peter Mac. Yeah, um, sorry, I did as well. <laughs> hair hair and, work, work. and here we are. And I ended up on drugs from 17 till 20 and living in Clondalkin back then to go on drugs it meant you get to sit in a house with a fire lighting. And if you weren't on drugs, you got to stand on the street. So that's the reason I went on drugs, just to follow the big boys around. Sure. What's your situation at the moment? My situation at the moment is I'm homeless since 2015. I bought a house in 2005. I had four children. I met a lovely fella. He walked every day, but he wouldn't come home from work. I was the cold epidemic, the snoring, and he would go gambling on a Thursday, and he wouldn't come home on a Tuesday. I had four children for him. I have a 21-year-old, a 17-year-old, and an 11 and 12-year-old. Um, the house that he's still living in the house with the kids. Thank God we never lost the house. Um, I've never signed out in Overton because when I die, my kids will get me house. He asked me a year ago to if he, there's 12 years between us. If I was if he needed to buy me out, he'd have to remortgage because the bank won't give him a remortgage at 55. And I said I will never take food out of my kids' mouths. So that's that's uh, so uh, unfortunately I wasn't allowed to see the kids up until this year because I was manically using. But now I'm just literally on methadone. So. Basically, you guys split up when? Like, in 2015. In 2015. I went back using heroin for three years secretly, and my family came around. I was seven stone to my sister and my mother, and bawled and said, You know, you either have AIDS or cancer, tell us the truth. And I swear to God, it would have been easier to tell them I had AIDS. Well, I told them. Point, it? Well, it was just the wailing. When I told them it was heroin, it was the wailing. They knew we were going back to them three years I was from 17 to 20. They asked me, was I prepared to bring my kids through that? And that's the day I decided to walk away. So, so the, Jeanette, just, Jeanette, yeah. uh, just one question on that. So, your relapse started from 2015? No, it would have started in, say, 2000 and uh, 2011. Okay. And I kept it a secret till 15. So when it came out, I had an uncle who was clean and he advised her when I went on her, or methadone. I went on methadone at 35. It was the worst thing I ever done. So I joined Solja in January. They told me it'd take a year to get me into Kundera. Solja is a day program, but they also have six beds in Kundera. They told me. They told me I'd take a year to get into a bed. I started soldier the tour of January. I was in a bed in Kundera on the 17th of March. I walked that out. So I got into soldier. When I got out, I was lost. I, I didn't know how to control feelings to hold up. I ended up, I had an affair. I ended up getting back with a fella I went out with when I was 17 who robbed houses. He was only out of jail five minutes after doing a 15 year stretch and it was the excitement. I wasn't doing drugs when I was still clean. Yeah. I was off the methadone, but it was the excitement. And a photograph was taken of the two of us walking up the road and I was found out. So I had to leave my house that day. But I wasn't prepared to bring my kids down. That, in? that was in 2015. You, had to, you and the husband split up then? Maybe split up, yeah. Yeah. So uh, how was your drug addiction? Was it at a peak? Was a I was, swing at the no, I was kind of smoking one to three bags a day, whatever I could get my hands yeah. on. Plus, I was always independent. I always walked. Uh, I walked into Fines Office in Dublin Castle. I walked in Allianz. I always had good jobs. I walked in insurance brokers after I left hairdressing. So I always had a fairly good steady income. And I always had money left over. So it wasn't that I had to rob Peter to pay Paul. I always had the money to cover my drug addiction. Yes. It was just when I went haywire, that's when I got found so, out. John, what's your situation now? Where the situation now, what, I'm, in, I'm in the Portobello now. Right. Yeah, what's that for? And those that don't know. The Portobello is a hotel. It's a really upper class hotel. I remember. Oh, the open port of, open yeah, Portobello. On Portobello yeah, Bridge. Yeah, so she let me there. So they're so, par paying the rent. Yeah, home is taken. Yeah. In the sense of yeah. it's, yeah, yeah. it's uh, But at least you have a room and yeah. you have a nice. For, I met, my daughter was 21 on the 20th of uh, April. 
and I met the father and my kids on the 24th and we went for dinner and he said it's the first time in 10 years that he's seen me looking half normal and it was a pleasure and there was no mud slung, there was no nothing, it was just about the kids and it was just about building our relationship, it's not about getting back together. If we can build how, our relationship... How are you managing at the moment? How am I, I managing? In this hotel. How am I managing? Yeah, you, on a payday, on, pay, on a payday I'm strung yeah. out. Yeah. Every other day, no, I'm just fucking trying to live day by you day. Methadone, then, I get methadone, I'm on 80 mils of methadone daily. Right. Um, it's the tablets that are a fucker now. I so, seem to be buying four packets of tablets a, a week, yeah. but now I'm taking five a day. I'm not trying to, five a day is still not good, but uh, that's what I need to own. It's better than smoking crack or smoking heroin. Do you know yes, what I mean? Yeah, I but um, it was great being able to hand the father and my kids, me urines, to say that I haven't been so smoking much you're an effort. Yeah. So and it wasn't. About you? What about your kids, Jonathan? Everyone, come here, come here. It was like a death. They said the day I walked out, it was like a grieving process started. And it was like, they'll never get over me. They'll never. And like, it's so sad, you know? And I was a fantastic house mother. I just didn't want to be a kept woman. I always had my independence. When I had my fourth child, he would not let me tax my car. He insisted I got a seven seat, which was fair enough having four kids. But to be living in Germany and to have no care and not being able to go and do your weekly shopping without a double buggy and two other kids. And they didn't want to be traipsing behind a double buggy. Sure. You know, it was very hard on everyone. You know, and then but you to hold I, I, did, I did the blame game and I blamed him on a lot of it, you know. A few to come home. But come here, the day I walked out, he stopped drinking, he stopped gambling, he stopped snorting, he stopped smoking weed. So he stood up to the plate. And I can't fault him. The kids now, I'm in, meeting the kids today for the second time in ten years. For the second oh time. How do you feel? I'm really apprehensive and nervous, but like, um, I won't be when I get there. The, yeah, that's that's because I have an opinion there. Uh, on Wednesday when I got paid, I got home and I had uh, my tablets in my sock and I had my money in my pocket and there's three girls in the room and when I woke up towards the morning everything was gone, yeah, everything. This is some of the problems about it. This is what, this what you're up against in, and it. even if you have in your pocket they're going to get it. Tell me something, uh, what do you want to do with the kids today? Then? We're going to Dublin Zoo. My door, my 21 year old works in the gift shop in Dublin Zoo so of course we'll be ringing her out to the door girls in. <laughs> Sure, you know, sure. but that's the perks and of it. Obviously, um, since your second time in 10 years. And second time in 10 years seeing the kids. Now, my 17 year old won't be there, and my 21, my 21 year old will be walking there, but she won't have any uh, conversation with me. And how old are the two that you're The other two I'm meeting are 11 and 12. They're two girls. Yeah. You know. Sure. And they, 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 so they don't really know you. They don't really know. Yeah, no, I see. no. You know, but I know um, yeah, nobody. They must be dying to see them. Yeah, and I know nobody puts me down, and I really feel like they're overcompensated for me not being there. Like, I have a sister, she's two boys, mm -hmm. and she would have a few quid, but she brings them to Disneyland twice a year in Paris. You know, they're whole girls, they're the so girls yeah, she never me, had. Uh, let me ask you something, and that's good yeah. that you have great family yeah. support like that. Is that not enough to get you up into treatment? No, you know? because although I meet them today, I might not hear from them for six months. I understand that. Even if I text, it's nothing. Well, even the two that are not talking to you, would that be a motivation for you to try? Well, to I'm hoping that the, obviously when they go back, the older kids are going to say, how did you get on and blah, blah, and they're going to ask their dad. And the dad's going to say whether I threw up stoned. Or, and yes. I feel like I'm pretty okay today. I feel like oh, I'm look, not stoned. Yeah, and yeah, look, yeah, look and look like, yeah, yeah. And I was actually surprised. And to I see actually, you I actually, up. yeah, that's me saying. Like I'm always spotless clean. I, I, I can't understand why people go around dirty. Well, it's the secondhand shops, you know. I mean, if you go into a secondhand shop and you tell them, look, I have a stitch, they will help you. Out. I know. There's a shop on Fade Street, and if I haven't had a shower, they bring me in and they shower me, and they actually give me clothes off the rack. They're so good to me, Sweet. the girls. Now, I don't abuse them. I might go in once every two months. Yeah. That's when I'm on the floor. But they don't, I wouldn't abuse them because they're kindness. Tell me something, John. How do you find, it must have, like, you've, you've held a pretty respectable life as well. Yeah. It's your drug yeah. addiction. You know, you held down jobs. And, yeah, yeah. And some it's really embarrassing. It's really embarrassing, yeah. So how, 
have you ever seen a colleague walking by? Or, yeah. And, and that must be very difficult. They it? pretend they don't see me, and it's so heartbreaking. That hurts you a lot, doesn't it? It hurts me, yeah, because I would have been really good friends with them, you know? They would have been, like, sitting next to me, you know? Sure. I would have covered their jobs, but they'd be, like, on a late lunch, and, you know, all these things are forgotten, you know? And I don't forget these things. Not the favours I've done, the favours they've done for me, and for them to just walk by me like I'm nobody, you know? Not even to ask what went wrong, you know? They were all at, they were all at me wedding, you know? Yes. It's just so hard, so hard, so hard. And I mean, you're still, you're still pretty much together physically. You haven't. I've seen a lot of girls, even younger than you, that have they've destroyed themselves. Yes, the yes, you know, yes, 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 yes. I mean, you're still very presentable. Would you not try and come off the gear? I haven't smoked gear in probably. I say the last time I smoked gear was probably eight months well, ago. Even the the methadone, I know. Look at, unless I got treatment, I, come here, I can't commit myself to a soldier course. Soldier was very tough, but I was in the mindset for it. But I can't commit at the minute. I just can't. You know yourself. I'm getting about three nights sleep a week, and it's because uh, we had races. We had, I just, we had will never slow what down. Me hope. Me hope. From this situation, where would you like to be? Like, you look we hope. I would love to get my own place. I would love to. Because I know it'd be spotless and it'd be girly. And I know, like, I could invite the father and my kids down. I know once he's seen, like, he would have no problem with the younger two staying with me and I are there. Yeah. That's all I want is a relationship back with my family. And that's it. To like, a bit of me aunt, my ma's older sister died there before Christmas and like it was so horrendous like not getting invited to the funeral. My godmother died, I never got invited to the funeral. You know, it's just so, so sad. So, so sad. Like, I'm supposed to do this grieving on my own, like, but like, I literally like find out on Facebook when someone's dead. You know, and like, that's tough in itself. That's heartbreak and it breaks me out. Janet, are you in touch with anyone to make your, say your dream to get your own little place? Is there anything, do you feel you're lost in the... In yeah, 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 I'm, not, I'm lost in translation, yeah, 100%. But um, I'm not out there seeking help either because I just find like really anyone awesome. that's tried to help me has told me the same old fucking story and like I've been there doing that and like you know stupid things like uh, post your labour card back to so and I can't because I need me labour on a Wednesday how can I post it to myself on a Tuesday and hold it to us I need it on a Wednesday. Do you know? But to wake up Penny, this was just heartbreaking, heartbreaking. To come out and do this before I've seen me kids. It's not nice. And I don't like sitting here. I don't like it. It's well, embarrassing. That, no, but it's embarrassing. It is embarrassing. I get that. I, I get that. You, you know? know? It's, it's, it is hard. And it's funny, when I stopped to talk to you earlier, and you said thank you so much for acknowledging me. No, and it I means thought, the world. And I thought, oh my God. But people walk by you so much. Like I, there could be two or two people walk by and one person say it oh, and that means the world. Even if it's not to hand you money, just to say I haven't got it means the world to me. I know, I know. And that's what I, I stopped to say, so you have no chance. No, and like, like yeah, 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 yeah. And then we start talking yeah. and we're doing this. But, uh, I see you in that and intelligent. I am, and I've so much to give. I've so yeah, much to give. To me, yeah. And I've so much love to give, you know. And drugs, drugs were to be all and end all of it all. But no, I'm done, I'm done. I've had enough. I've had enough. Yeah, you know, I'm 45 now. I've just, I've had enough. Like my uncle, he was clean when, when I started and he got me on the methadone. And then all of a sudden now, He's back used and he got into treatment and walked out because he locked the door at half eleven and he got claustrophobic and he's sixty. I'm like, how old are you? To get into treatment, you do not live. Would you like to get into treatment? Oh my god, if someone had said the door, the taxi's there and the door's open when you get there, I'd be in that taxi. Would you do, get your name down for Coon Dara, go through the whole process. Coon Dara, well, even if it takes you a year yeah, or two, you'll but, get there. Come here, I will, I will do so, Jen, I will get into Coon Dara. And like that, he told me a year and I got a bed within fucking 12 weeks. I yeah. can't put the walk in. I, I know, and you're intelligent, and I can see that if you're yeah. determined. Yeah. You know, I'd have a lot of hope for you, Janet. Thank you. Thank you. You're the only person that said that to me in so long. Oh, 
that's what you need, is just someone to believe in you, give you a chance. Bless you. It's so hard, it's just so hard. Will you keep trying though? I am going to, yeah. Janet, the only reason I'm sitting in front of you is I never gave up trying. Yeah. It's chronic heroin. Really? Chronic. I'm 40 years on heroin, HIV 40 years. I mean, I mean, I was out there on the street. I never thought I'd be really? 40. Really? 60 or 60. And you know what? I thought I'd never, I thought, like, I remember when I was like nine and being able to count to 20 and saying, I'll never get to 20 because it seemed like so many numbers Do away. I believe in you. Do you? Oh, I, do. I don't know why I only met you, but I Really, you. really? Yes. Well, as they say, there's a reason or a season, Paul. I'm glad I met you. I'm glad I met you. I'm come here. I'm there's give you my number there's some people in me, and like it's so sinister. Like, and there's people that walk by, and they're like, um, you, you looking for business, and it's so degrading. Oh, like, there's two women standing there one day, and I said, did you hear what this man said to me? And he stood there. I said, he's looking for me to give him business, and they chased him away. Now these women, like, were in their fifties and sixties, yeah. but they were so horrified. I, I had know. to tell because someone because it's so position. unbelievable. The, I know, that I these these yeah. Turkish fellas think that they can just walk up to a girl that's sitting tapping and she's not embarrassed they to think do. If she's gonna sit. They oh, yeah. think if she sits and taps on the street she'll do my own from a few quid. And that's their mentality. Yeah, so yeah. well thank so God, very... thank God it's never brought me to no, that. Thank, thank God, God. Thank, thank God. God, thank God. Well John, listen, uh, for two things. First of all, I hope you have a great day with your kids today. Thank you. I really do. Thank and I hope it, and don't be anxious about it. Uh, you, you'll be able to take me in and get them. Yeah, and yeah, 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 yeah. No, I hope you have a great day with your kids. And the second is, uh, thank you so much for talking to me and for being so honest and open. Um, Thanks for letting me cry, because my mum to say if you didn't cry, there'd be something wrong. And it took me so long to cry, because yeah, I'd be just told me, and I'd, like when you're in hospice, you just try and be like the hard person, like, and you put this persona out, like, no one do anything on me. But like, it's, it's just great so, it's great to, to be vulnerable. It's, yes. it's great to be able to be vulnerable. Yeah, especially for someone like you that has to try and not be vulnerable a lot yeah. of the time. Yeah. And thank you for being vulnerable with me and sharing. Thank you. Me. Thanks. Thanks for listening to me because sometimes I feel like, oh, this person's after sitting down here. I am off. Like they better can't rate to one. But no, thanks, Paul. What you have to say is very important because you're suffering, sweetheart. Thanks, and, uh, Paul. You're suffering. And thanks for Monday because sometimes you feel like you're going mad, and sometimes it's very like you brought all this on yourself. You've no one to blame but yourself. But you know yourself how it happens. You know. You're going to be all right, Janet, but you got to put the effort in. I know, I know, and going. I'm in a really good place at the minute, and I actually said if I'm going to do it, that's where I'm going to do it. Like, it's a hotel, it's not scruffy, it's spot as ever, non suite, you know. Well, look, I'll be always around here, the same, just call me. Yeah. And, um, listen, I wish, you the, I wish you the best. Thanks, Thank you for being honest. Thank you, thank you. Well, guys, you know the city, Dublin, it's full of heartbroken people. Be kind, life is short. It's a party for culture.